What's up? This is Casey with The Real Life, and today I'd like to welcome you to the brand new Street Smart Training for Adobe Premiere CC. Now, if you don't know what Street Smart Training is, it's our new series of training videos that gets you up and working really quickly with a lot of the design programs, video production programs, all sorts of awesome software that we use every day. This isn't going to be a really detailed every single little window. I'm going to show you everything about everything. There's already training out there for that. But this is going to get you up and working, give you some working need to know knowledge of the software so that at the end, you'll actually be able to do something. And we're going to get deeper and deeper and more detailed later. But if you know the basics, you can actually start working on it. And that's the point. So without further ado, here is Adobe Premiere CC Street Smart Training. So once you open Premiere CC, this is what you get. This is the default workspace. One thing about these tabs, first of all, is you can grab them and you can move them. So if I want my project window up here, I can just put it up there and it becomes a tab and I can reorder the tabs and it's a really nice fluid layout. All of these are resizable and you can split windows. You can do all sorts of cool stuff. It's super nice. So here's some of the windows. Project window. This is where you're going to import all of your media. If you bring in music, if you bring in audio, footage, whatever it is, it's going to land here. And this is also where you can make new sequences, new folders to put your media into. This is kind of like your grab bag of goodies that is imported into the project. Over here is the timeline. That's where you actually work with media. So you'll import your footage and then put it into the timeline. And that's where you're going to cut it up, do crossfades, do whatever you want to actually make your video look awesome. The program window is what the end viewer is actually going to see. So everything that you do in here is going to show up here. Before I talk about the other windows, first of all, I'm going to import something. So you can either right click and hit import, or you can go up to file and hit import, or you can hit command I, or you can just double click in the project window, which is what I usually do. That'll bring up your import dialog. And now I'm just going to select a few of these clips that I want to import and it's going to take a couple seconds to think about it. So here's my media and I can take this media and I can drag it onto this little folder down here and it will put it in a bin. So a folder is a bin, a bin is a folder, it's the same thing. So I'll call this video. It's important to stay organized in your project window, especially if you have a lot of footage. So now that's neatly organized, really nice. That's great. Now I can double click on my media and it brings it up in the source window. So there's the program window, and the source window. This source window is kind of like a preview. So you can look at this media before you actually commit to do anything with it. You can also go through and set your in point and your out point, which you can either use these little buttons down here, or you can hit I and O on the keyboard, which is usually what I do. So I'll hit an I and go down to something that I carefully planned and hit O. And now I can either drag it into my timeline to work with, just like that, and it keeps that in and out point. Or I can hit this insert or overwrite button. So I'll hit my overwrite button, and that's just going to lay it down in the timeline. Now, let's say I want to add a smaller clip. Here I go, and if I hit overwrite, it's going to overwrite that clip. And so here's the clip I just laid down, and here's the clip that was there. And so you can see the difference. This is the, my clip, and this is what happens when I hit overwrite. But now I'm going to show you what happens when you hit insert. I'm going to take my time indicator all the way to zero, and I'm going to hit insert. And what that does is push my media down. It doesn't overwrite anything. It just puts this media in the timeline right where the time indicator is, and it pushes everything else down. So that's a nice way to edit. Another thing that's really cool is you can grab just this little film strip. You can just drag the video or this little audio thing and drag just the audio. Or if you grab the image, you can drag both. So really simple, easy ways to get stuff into the timeline to actually work with it. So when you open up a sequence, it opens up in the timeline window. So a timeline and a sequence are kind of the same thing. Usually when you say timeline, you mean actually working with the interface down here, whereas a sequence talks about, whereas a sequence is the collection, the, the actual edit, the the movie that you're going to render or work with. So if I make a new sequence, I can call it new sequence. I can double click it 
and it opens up in my timeline. And I have tabs so I can open up multiple sequences. And that's great because I can have a couple different edits on one sequence. And maybe I like it, maybe I don't. And maybe I like what I'm doing, but I want to experiment a little bit. I can copy these by hitting Command C, and I can go into my new sequence and paste them. And then I can play around, and if I want to, I can just make this crazy and experiment without worrying about losing my original edit because it's back here in this other sequence. So you can open multiple sequences at one time in the timeline window. Another really cool thing is you can take this tab and you can drag it up top like this and you can have two timelines here. And so a really great thing is, let's say I like this little chunk, I can select this and just drag it down to my new sequence. So a lot of the time I'll have all my raw footage here and so I can just go through and look at all of my footage and figure out what parts I like and then I can just grab parts and put it down here and really quickly assemble a rough edit. So that's a really great way, especially if you're working with media that needs to be synced up with separate audio, that type of thing. So let's talk about actually building an edit in the timeline. The very first thing you want to do is make sure that your settings for your sequence are correct. So what you can do is right click on your media and you can say new sequence from clip. And what that's going to do is make a sequence that's totally perfect settings for your clip. So we're just going to start with that and I can actually delete this. So now I have my sequence that has all the perfect settings and everything that I would ever want. So that's great. So now I'm going to drag this sequence to the root level of my project window and I'm going to call it edit. Now I can add some media. So normally you would go through and set all of your perfect in and out points, everything that you want to include in your movie. But for now, I'm just going to go through this really quick for the sake of time. So I'm just setting my in and out and I'm dragging it to the timeline. So when you drag a clip to the timeline, sometimes it lines up with the end of your last clip and sometimes you get the space here. And the easiest way to deal with that is just to click right here in the space and hit the delete key. And that's going to get rid of all the space in between the clips and it's going to be great. So now I have all my clips here and you'll notice this yellow and red bar here. Red means that there's probably something wrong with the clip or the settings are different or it has to render it or it has to think about it, something like that. Premiere doesn't usually have to render things for playback. Um, most of the time it will play things back regardless if it has a red bar or not. The reason this is red is because this is 720p footage and this is a 1080 timeline. So an easy way to deal with that is select this clip, right click, and I can say scale the frame size and that's going to scale that up. Notice I still have a red bar there, but it doesn't look weird in the viewer, which is what we're looking for. So there are my clips, and let's say I didn't like my in and out on this clip. I can change it by just mousing over the end of the clip, and my mouse turns to this little red arrow thing. That means I can roll the edge of this edit back and forth, and I can change the length of this clip. And so that's a really basic editing technique, and then I can just delete my space in between. Another thing I wanted to mention really quick is not only can you trim the edges of your clip, but you can also split your clip and you can do that in a couple ways. You can hit C on the keyboard for cut and you can just click anywhere on the clip to cut it in half. Another thing you can do is position your playhead right where you want to clip and hit command K and that will razor your clip right where this timeline is. So command K, command K, that's a really easy way to cut and then you can move things around, change them, do your editing. Something to remember about cutting this way is that it's only gonna cut clips on highlighted tracks. And so to highlight a track, you can just click on this V1, V2, V3, and you see how it makes this a lighter gray? That means it's highlighted. If this track is not highlighted, but this one is, if I hit Command K, this will only cut the clips that are in the highlighted tracks. And so now I can highlight three, to highlight one, and hit Command K, and it will just cut three. Just a quick note, if you want to adjust your audio and your video separately, you can select your clip, right click, and hit unlink, and that will unlink your audio from your video so that you can either move them around 
you can trim them separately you can make a cut in just the audio and not the video you can add a transition to just your video and not your audio just your audio not your video and treat them as separate things so real easy way to do that you can also select them and hit command L that's the same as hitting the unlink feature so let's talk about transitions I'm not a big fan of transitions but a lot of the time you'll want something to fade down to black or the audio to fade down to silence so a really easy way to do that is just mouse over the end of your clip and you can select just the edge and you can right click and say apply default transitions and in Premiere by default the transition is cross dissolve and if you add this transition in between clips it's going to fade from one clip into the other but if you add it at the end that's a really easy way just to fade to black same thing with audio you can either cross fade the audio or you can fade it down to silence a really cool thing that's brand new in Premiere CC is you can mouse over these tracks and you can roll up and down with your scroll wheel and you can resize them and with audio you can start to see your audio waveforms and that's really great if you're cutting for dialogue or if you want to sync up some audio to the video that type of stuff that we'll get into later but that's a real easy way to have a visual representation of your audio I can also grab these clips and move them around the timeline change their order all that type of stuff that you would normally do when editing something so if you're familiar with editing this is going to work just like an audio editing program or any other video editing program it's very very similar techniques it's just in Premiere so so let's say I have my edit done and now I want to add some effects maybe I want these colors to be a little bit different really easy in Premiere so I can go over to my effects tab which is by default behind my project tab I can grab that and it brings up a whole bunch of folders that has different effects, different transitions. And these transitions you can just drag onto, onto an edge between the clips, resize them. And you can also do this for video transitions and do all sorts of really tacky transitions if you want to, because there's all sorts of goodness there. I would recommend never using those um, because they look awful, but that's just my opinion. So, but onto effects. So I can twirl down my video effects and there's a whole bunch of goodies that you can apply to your video. But for now I'm going to twirl down color correction and let's just go to RGB curves. And I'm going to drag that onto my clip, let go, and now you'll see this has turned red. That's because I added an effect to it. It has to think a little more. So I'm going to select this, go up to my effect controls, and here I have all of my controls for this effect that I just applied, the RGB curves. And now I can add a curves adjustment and it starts playing with my colors. So that's basically how you add any effect in Premiere. It's, it all works the same. The only differences are the controls once you twirl it down in the effect controls. Also in the effect controls are the motion, opacity, that type of stuff. So motion, if you select this, you can move your video around, you can scale it, you can move the position, rotate it, all the things that have to do with the actual motion of the video. And if you hit this little circle-y arrow thing, you can reset everything. Same with opacity, you can twirl it down and take the opacity of your video down. So let's pretend like this whole thing looks exactly how I want. It's the most beautiful movie I've ever seen. Once it looks awesome, it's time to export which means that I want to actually make this into a movie that people can watch without opening Premiere. So I want to export my timeline so I can click inside my sequence go up to file export media and this brings up my export settings dialog box here. Now this is where things can get very very complicated if you don't know much about formats or about you know video compression or anything like that this is going to be a little bit tricky but fortunately for you and me they have presets so almost all the time I'm rendering a QuickTime movie and you can render a whole bunch of different types of movies but usually you want to pick QuickTime and you can hit a preset and if you're going to upload to YouTube this HD 720p 24 H.264 AAC 48 kilohertz which is a lot to say this preset is really really nice for YouTube it's gonna look beautiful it's gonna be a really small file it's gonna be awesome 
The only thing I might do is change this frame rate to 23.976. Really easy. And if you know what you're doing, you can go through and change all of these settings. That's probably something we'll get into later. But under output name, you can hit this yellow link and then tell it where to save it to. So I'm going to save it right there. And then you hit export. And so that's going to actually render your edit. You can also hit Q. And Q is going to open it up in Adobe Media Encoder. That's something we're also going to get into later, but that's a really great way to render multiple things at one time without interrupting Premiere. So you can keep working in Premiere and still have something render. So that's basically how you use Premiere. So if you have any questions, go ahead and comment on this video. If you like this video, hit like. If you really like this video, you should hit subscribe because we'll be sending you all sorts of goodies and it'll be great. So that should give you a working knowledge of Premiere. And once again, I'm Casey with The Real Life and I'll catch you next time.